Was your January income as crappy as mine was? I guess that's a little bit of spoiler alert as a pretext for what's to come in this video for my January behind the scenes peek at my income made through Amazon KDP. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Rebecca and I am so glad you found me. I have been sharing behind the scenes peeks at my venture trying to sell low content books on Amazon KDP to let you know whether I think it's still worth it in 2024 as a true side hustle to make some actual money. If you haven't caught up, you can check back at some of my older videos to see exactly how the months were going, and I highly recommend watching the end of fourth quarter, October, November, December, and you'd see that my income was climbing month by month. Here's a look back at December, where my approximate royalties were $474, and I did have a little bit of ad spend, but I still generated at least $300 in revenue, but again, watch the video for the exact numbers. The point is, even though I knew January would be a little bit slower because it's no longer holiday season, I did not have any idea what to expect, and I had two problems I hit this month. One was, yes, it's January. People are not buying nearly as much as they do at the end of fourth quarter. That's something I couldn't fix, I couldn't do anything about. But number two was a problem that I totally caused myself and could have fixed, and that was in ad spend. So stick with me right now as I show you what my January looked like, and hopefully you did a lot better in January, but I always like to hear about your adventure, so drop some comments below whether we are going through the same struggles together or you did well, I'm happy for you and we'll celebrate you. And if we both need to vent about how January was a little bit of a disappointment, we can do that together as well. So always, always drop your stories in the comments so that we can connect along this journey. That said, let's jump into January. Here we can see that in January, I did still continue to sell multiple books a day. And at this point, I do have over 300 books in my low content library. So there are a lot of opportunities to sell, but a lot of them are seasonal. And so I didn't have high expectations because there's not much to celebrate in January in terms of gift giving. However, I was still pleased to see that I did have some days spike with 14 and 15 book copies sold in a day. And one thing I did find really interesting is that this 15 day spike actually sold one copy of 15 different books. So it was not multiple sales, it was not multiple copies to a single buyer, it was truly 15 different books that just happened to attract a buyer. Now 233 sales is really exciting to me, especially when I take a step back and remember that one of my goals was just to see a consistent sale or two every day. 233 in a slow month is fantastic. However, because they are low and medium content books, I don't have a high margin on them. So I am only making about one to $2 per sale and that's before any ad spend. So let's start by looking at what this 233 units sold converts into as cash in my pocket. When I look at last month and I check out all books, you can see that the spikes are pretty similar because all of my books pretty much have the same margins. So it does tend to be pretty parallel in that the days with spikes in more units also are usually the days with spikes in revenue. And ultimately those books converted to $366.24. Now that is a fantastic number and I know that there are people out there just wishing they could hit $300 a month. So I am definitely not knocking it. I know I've put a lot of time and effort into this, but on the flip side, I was getting my sights set on trying to make $500 profit a month minimums at the beginning of this year, and that obviously did not happen in the month of January. I do think it's interesting to check out and see that books are selling in countries other than my own. So while I'm based in the United States, it is really cool to see that I got some print book sales in the UK, in Canada, in Australia and even in Germany in the month of January. The one ebook I have, I have not put a lot of time or effort into marketing or adding any A-list content, so it doesn't surprise me that I continue to see no ebook royalties, 
but I do like that my print royalties are being generated in multiple countries. Um, that's just kind of a cool fun fact. And maybe another little goal you can add for yourself if you're not focused solely on the monetary side. Now, speaking of that cash, let's talk about ad spend because this $366 is not what I made in profit. Anytime you follow advice of any gurus, other YouTubers, novices, whatever level they're at, Make sure that when you hear people talking about six figures or even this three figure income that I'm showing you, there is typically a flip side to that that is cost behind the sales, advertising, marketing, labor, all of those features. So for me, coming from a finance background, I always, always like to point out that yes, you can absolutely call yourself a six figure guru if you generate $100,000 in revenue. But that does not mean that you kept $100,000. You could have spent $999,000 in costs and advertising and marketing to get those sales, therefore only really making $1,000. And you could still call yourself a six-figure guru because when you refer to those figures, we're talking about the top line. We're talking about how much you made in sales. So I do just like to point that out to keep people realistic and down to earth. And there are absolutely people making six-figure profit that's hitting their bank account. But don't get stars and dollar signs in your eyes and don't get jealous and envious of somebody else's path because if they're not showing you the books, showing you the numbers behind the scenes, there could be something that you're missing. And sometimes things do seem too good to be true because they are. So again, that said, let's see what's too good to be true about even my $366 here in January. If we head over to marketing and go to my ads console, it will pull up my campaigns and I will set it to January 1st through 31st so that we are aligned with the same time frame. And here we go. Okay, so this doesn't look nearly as bad as I expected, but here's what I did in the month of January. In January, I did continue the lottery ads I've been running on all of my books. And then in the first couple of weeks of January, I decided to venture into targeted ads. I did watch a YouTube video or two, but I can't say I truly focused. I didn't take a course. I didn't do a lot of research. I just figured that I had enough general knowledge that I could take the steps forward, find some smart keywords, and try to target an audience for my Valentine's books. I thought maybe the last couple of weeks of January and leading up to the first week of February would be a good time to try that out with a very specific goal in mind and very specific targeted keywords. So I think that's probably about here, January 12th, where you can see this huge spike of advertising cost of sales. And I will click through to see what this general auto-targeting was all about. So as I just mentioned, I set up this auto-targeting for my Valentine's Day activity books. And I had seven of these activity books grouped into this campaign. Now, initially it looks like I did make a profit off of these ads because the spend was 137 and my sales were 157. So of course it's not pretty. You think that maybe I at least profited $20, but you can see that my ACOS is 87%, which is way too high. And the bigger problem is that this sales number is that top line revenue number I was just talking about. So this means that I sold $157.88 in books that's the money that Amazon collected. That's not coming out of the portion of money that I was making in royalties. So in terms of sales, this 157, I only made a small fraction of that. And ultimately that means that I spent way more money on advertising than I generated in revenue. I lost money with this campaign. A few problems I had, and hopefully you will learn from me and not have to make the same mistake yourself, but a few problems I did have included A, not truly focusing on the right keywords. B, I think the timing was probably not right. People might have seen the ads, but weren't in a hurry to click through, especially something so generic as some of my Valentine's Day activity books. Um, none of them are truly unique, outstanding, one of a kind. They are 
kind of like the cute fun books that you would pick up, a coloring book for kids, but not one that if you see, you say, oh, I better get that one because I'll regret not being able to find it again. And then three, I believe I had this maxing out at a $10 a day budget and I had it going on far too long before checking on it and realizing I needed to turn it off. So you can see in the blue line here on this chart that on the 24th, it suddenly dips down and zeroes out. And that's because on the 24th, I finally had the sense to come into my account, look at my ads, and realize that I was spending $10 a day every day, and I wasn't getting the sales to match it. Remember earlier I said that I only make about $1 to $2 a sale because my books are low content and how I choose to price them? So that means at $10 a day, I would have to be selling five to 10 books every day just to break even. And you can see that I absolutely was not selling five to 10 books in my Valentine's category to break even. So the lesson here is as you try out ads, make sure that you keep an eye on it, especially at the beginning, and make sure you set your daily budget with something you're comfortable losing. Luckily here, I was prepared to spend a few hundred dollars in advertising as an experiment because I have made that money through KDP already. So I just considered it reinvesting and hoping that it would work for growth. However, do not be scared of advertising because the lottery ads I've been running have still continued to do fantastically. So as of right now, I have shut off this auto-targeting campaign and I have turned back to my focus on lottery ads. All that said, you see here that I did spend $287 in ads in the month of January. So with that 366 that I brought in royalties, ultimately I profited about $79 in January. Ultimately, I am happy that I profited considering this big mistake I was making in ads. At least I didn't lose money overall. But $79 is definitely the lowest amount I have made in a long time in this venture, possibly since maybe my earliest three months doing this. And remember, although the sales figure is attractive at $784, that's all the revenue that Amazon generated overall because of my books. So if a book was priced at $10, that's what's being factored in here. It is nowhere near the amount of royalties that go into my pocket. As you can tell, I do like going through the nuances of the numbers. I don't want to overwhelm you, but if you are new to finance or you're not familiar, I'm always happy to walk through the numbers with you. I love to help other entrepreneurs make sure that they understand the data and the numbers so that they're making wise decisions with their money. I don't want other sellers to see a number like 784 and think that they are making a ton of money because you can see when we really walk through the situation, I only had about 80 bucks come in through the month of January. If you need help with your numbers, leave me a comment, let me know. Um, I'd be glad to put together other videos or see how I can help you one-on-one. -on -one. But until then, I hope you continue to hit the ground running. I will as well. I was not great in January with publishing new books, so I absolutely have to hit some new metrics for February. And hopefully February will begin to pick up for us. I do expect it to continue to be a little of a slow month, but we do at least have Valentine's Day potential. We have Easter early March this year. And of course, all of the other holidays, all of the other year round events you can continue to publish for along the way. Again, if you're new to this channel, I would love to have you hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if there's anything specific I can help answer for you to help you get your Amazon KDP business up and running as well. Until next time, goodbye.